So our final section today is going to take a look at evaluations for both links and nodes. Um, so kind of looking through the results and then looking at some visualizations. So both link and node evaluations, these can be used um, either to look at roadway data, so looking at like speed, density, and volume, or the nodes can be used to look at some intersection data, such as queue lengths, um, delays, and stops. So once you have your network built up, there's a couple of different ways to turn on that link evaluation. So you first off, you can either double click or just edit a link in particular. And if you go to the Others tab here, there's a section um, on the left-hand side for the link evaluation. And link evaluation has two attributes associated with it. Um, the first is just turning that link evaluation on, and then the second is the segment length. And so this will basically take your link and split it up into smaller sections if you wanted to collect data kind of at these smaller increments. Otherwise, if you did want to collect data for all of the links as a whole, you could set this to a high value like 9999 um, just to make sure that you cap and capture the full link length. And then if you want to just turn this on for all of the links, the quickest way will be to open up the link list and then search for both of those attributes. And then you can like highlight these and enter in different segment lengths. Um, and then you can also press like the space bar if you want to easily turn on or off that link evaluation. And then in order to turn on uh, the evaluation collection, if you go to evaluation configuration and go to the results tab, this is where you'll check collect data for links. And then you can set the from and to time. Um, the from time is really useful if you had a warm-up time period that you didn't want to include in the evaluation measures. And then you can also set up different intervals if you kind of want to break up that evaluation into different buckets. And then if you click the more option, this is where you can change um, how those results are collected if you wanted to have them collected uh, per lane rather than um, for the link as a whole. And then to view the results, if you go back to evaluation and result list, you can select link results. And this will open up a link table. And so just quickly wanted to go over um, a few of the different um, results that show up here for the links. Uh, the first one here that we're going to cover is the link density, which is the average number of vehicles in the segment divided by that segment length. So in this case, um, here I've just kind of measured out those 30, 32.8 foot segments here. And so for each of these, um, that density will be calculated based on the average number of vehicles in that segment, um, again, divided by that length. And then um, the next one here is the relative delay. And so this will be the total delay divided by the total travel time of all the vehicles that travel over that particular link segment. And delay in VSIM is calculated based on the um, actual vehicle travel time minus the theoretical travel time if there were free flow conditions. And then next up, we have the speed on the link. And so this is calculated based on the total distance traveled along on that segment divided by the total time vehicles spend on that segment. And then finally, we have volume here. And this is going to be the number of trips that travel through that segment. And as part of this measurement, partial trips are also included. So if maybe part of a vehicle got on the segment or was leaving the segment, that will also be included. So sometimes you'll see like this 0.13 here or 0.76 show up in the volume. And that's just because it's um, including some of those partial trips. And then all of these results can also be kind of brought over into an Excel if you wanted to perform some additional, additional analysis or create some plots, like some of the scatter plots. Um, in this case, we just have an example using the speed data and the volume data. And so all you'll need to do is click this little copy button, and this will store 
all of the data on your clipboard so you can just easily paste it into Excel um, to perform that additional analysis. And then using some of these uh, results, we can also do some visualization. So the first option here is to color the links based on an attribute, in this case, speed. In the middle, you can also add some link bars. So this will essentially just add some width um, and kind of create like kind of bandwidth along each of the links. Um, in this case, looking at the volume attribute. And then if you really love all the colors and want to display all of the data, you can combine them. Um, in this case, we're showing link color by speed. Um, the link bars, the thickness is by volume. And then the bars are also colored by density. So there's a lot of different options for visualizations directly within VSIM just to kind of display and quickly look through your data. So all of these can be set up within the link graphic parameters. So if you go to the links on the network objects and then you select the graphic parameters button, this will open up the graphic parameters window. And to do the link, the actual coloring of the links, um, you'll just change the drawing mode here to use color scheme. And then right below that, you can configure um, what attribute you want to use. So in this case, I was just pulling the speed. And you can pull this for different vehicle types and different time intervals. And then in the bottom, you can select different colors to use and what bounds you want to set up. Um, if you click the little color picker over here on the right-hand side, um, this will has kind of some just some defaults that you can easily pull for like um, speed, volume, and density. And then for the link bars, they have their own section here, so the link bar drawing mode. And you can just change that to the links and link bar options. And then directly below that is where you can configure this further. So at the you know, the top section is where you can select the attribute for that width, width setting. And you can change some of the scaling if you want to. And then at the bottom is where you can then go ahead and color those link bars and select what attribute to use for that coloring. All right, and then kind of moving over to the node evaluation. So these nodes will kind of create an area around an intersection and kind of tell VSIM, OK, this is an, an intersection that we want to evaluate. So first, you'll just add your nodes to the network um, and just place all of those points. And when you're placing these at intersections, you just want to make sure that the node edge is going to cover all of your each of your turn lanes to make sure that that will get included in the calculation. And then you also want to make sure that it's placed so that all of the signal heads um, and any, any control devices are encompassed within that node, because the node will use that um, when it's calculating some of the result attributes. And then once you create those nodes, um, you can just turn these on for evaluation either, again, by editing the nodes directly and selecting Use for Evaluation, or you can also update it for a bunch of nodes at once using um, the list layout. OK, and then setting up the node evaluation to print out, if you go to Evaluation Configuration, here, here you'll just check Collect Data for Nodes. Again, you can set your from and to time and the interval. And then you can select this More button to actually adjust some of the calculation settings for delay segments and for queue definitions. So I just wanted to take a closer look at that. So the delay segments essentially kind of define that intersection area. So this distance here will be where that delay segment starts. So in this case, it's about 328 feet from the control device. So here you can see where that delay segment would start um, be started uh, for those node results. And then you can also further define some of the, the Q definition. So in this case, we'll take a look at the, the speed definitions here. So as the vehicle is traveling along, once its speed is lower than that first threshold here, in this case, 3.1, um, that vehicle will be considered to be in the queue. 
and then it will stay in that um, Q, queuing state until its speed um, is then greater than the higher threshold set here, in this case, 6.2. So as long as vehicle speed is within these bounds set within the node evaluation, um, that's what the sim will use to kind of uh, create the, those queue definitions. And then again, to view these results, you can go to the evaluation menu and just pull up the node results. Um, and again, this will be that kind of that table layout. And this is where you can get information about the average queue length, the maximum queue length, and also delay information. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that this delay is simulation-based delay, not like um, the current like vehicle delay that would be experienced out in the field. So it is going to be a slightly different um, uh, kind of delay that's um, being provided. And you can also look at the number of stops that occur within that node and how long those stops were for. And then if we take a look at some of the node evaluations, um, the first one here is the turn value visualization. So this will just show a graphic around the node um, and kind of display the volume by default for each of the turning movements. So here you can see kind of like the left turn volume, the through volume, and uh, the right turn volume here. And so that will show it for each of the approaches. And you can set this up for different attributes, which I'll show you um, in the example file. And then you can also set up uh, the queue length visualization as well. Um, and this is kind of what we talked about in that very first tooltips episode, where you can just quickly visualize and see kind of where those queues how those cues are looking. So if you click on, oh, simulation finished, that's good. <laughs> so if you click on the nodes um, and then go to the graphic parameters, um, near the bottom is where you can check the box to go uh, to turn on that turn value visualization. And then if you click the, the um, ellipses here to open up the visualization window, this is where you can set what attribute to use. And then in the bottom, you can also change some of the coloring. Maybe if you wanted those to be colored by delay, um, you can set that up down there. And then again, for the queue length, that's all at the very bottom of the graphics parameters window. And you can just check that show queue length and then select what attribute to look at if you wanted to look at average queue length or maximum queue length. So let me go pull up our sample network here so we can take a look at some of the link visualization and queue visualization. So here's an example. Um, we've got a node drawn in here. And if I click on the link graphic parameters here, this is where, again, you can change that drawing mode to use color scheme if you wanted to turn on the speed. Um, or use any other attributes. So this is just using that speed right now. Also turn on that legend here. And then this can also be updated as the simulation is running based on that evaluation interval that's set in the parameters. So I'll briefly change this back so it doesn't get too busy here. Um, but I'm going to change the link bars now to the link and link bar option. And this is where, again, you can set up if you wanted the width to be based on volume and maybe the color based on density. So you can kind of look at multiple attributes at once and quickly look through the network. And then if we go take a look at nodes, Um, first, we'll just take a look at the turn values here. So you can also change um, the uh, like the circle diameter if you um, kind of click on the edge and you can kind of drag it if you wanted to make it bigger. Um, that way you can kind of see more of the turning information. But essentially, if you if you turn in um, some of the smaller, like the really small small volumes, will be um, a little bit harder to see, so some of those will sometimes get hidden. 
um, but you can also manually adjust some of those width parameters in uh, this graphics window. So here's where you can change some of the width scaling um, and set kind of those maximum values if you wanted all of the movements to be displayed. Um, and then also in this example file, I just did a quick UDA. Um, so it's pulling some information about the um, the static slope, like the, um, the static vehicle route flows. So this is just, just a quick example. If you kind of wanted to see visually the values for the static routes that you have set up going through the network. Um, and this does require like the network that the network is built so that you have like kind of connectors running through because um, essentially it's going to pull out the sum of the static route flows that travel over these connectors. Um, but this is just a good way to be able to kind of visualize that um, or visualize the volumes that are traveling through the network. And then finally, you can also again show those queue lengths by just checking that show queue lengths box. Um, and in this case, we're looking at some of the maximum values. And you can see the queue lengths should be displayed using um, those little labels there.